In this video, we're going to show 10 tips that every beginner should know. We're going to start out. I'll show you my version of FreeCAD. I'm on the latest release, the latest downloaded release. And that is uh, 0 0.21.2. Now we're in FreeCAD by default. I'm always in part design, so if you start up with the, the start screen, you want to switch yourself into the part design workbench. That's where all these tips are going to take place, so you can follow along. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new file. Inside that file, we're going to create a part, then we're going to create a body, and then we're going to create a sketch. I'm going to create a sketch on the XY plane. And I'm going to say OK. Now, tip number one. When you're in the sketch here, if you center that sketch, look over here, you'll see my size here is 0.02 millimeters by 0.01 millimeters. That means I'm zoomed all the way in here. So anything I create this size is going to be tiny. So what I want to do is I'm going to roll my scroll mouse. I'm going to roll it out. If you look down here, watch down here, you will see I'm rolling out to a bigger size and I'm going to start in this size. It's not exact. It doesn't matter. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to create some geometry. Now I'm looking at my sketcher. When these lines are blue, that means I'm in construction mode. So I'm going to click this and it will they'll go back to white. That puts them in normal mode. So when we're creating some geometry that we want to use to make a pad or something like that, we want it to be in normal mode. We can't pad um, construction geometry okay the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create something with our polyline so I'm going to select the polyline I'm going to create some geometry just this kind of geometry nothing particular right now I'm going to show you how we take this geometry and constrain it but first, I'm going to create the geometry to there, and I'm going to stop. Now what I want to do is to mirror that geometry. So let's try mirroring it. When we select the geometry, if I select mirror, which is this guy up here, this symmetry, will create a mirror of that geometry. When I create it, it just creates alongside it so here's the tip I'm gonna control Z to get rid of that when you select the geometry now hold down control and click on a line and that's the line around which you're gonna mirror so now if I click mirror I get the geometry in the area I want it so here's another tip. Now I want to join this line to this line. So I could easily go into that line and say this point should be connected to this point. That's a bad idea. What's going to happen then is I'll have a line here and a line from here and there'll be a point in the middle and I don't want that. I want one line. So the way to do that is we just take this line and delete it. We take this line and delete it. Then we take this point and we select this point and we use our uh, constraint of coincidence and we just put them together. And now they're not constrained in any way there so I can still move that around. Same with this one, and take this point and this point, make them coincident. 
and now I have my shape. Okay, next tip. I want this line and this line to be aligned. So I could take this point and this point, hit horizontal, and now they're horizontally aligned. So if I move this up, that goes up. That's great if I'm not then gonna try and pick some symmetry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete that constraint, select it and delete it. So now they're not aligned. Now if I pick this point and this point and I pick this line and I pick symmetry, now they're both aligned up and down and they're symmetrical to this line with only one constraint. So that's a good thing to have. Now, I can do the same thing if I want to align these two together and be symmetrical around this line. I can select this point, this point, and this line, select symmetry, and now this is connected. The next tip, what if I want this line to be one third to the side of the Y axis and two thirds to the right of the Y axis. So approximately like that. Here's how I would achieve that. We're gonna take a dimension. We'll go from the center to this point. And that dimension, we're gonna make 20 millimeters. And we're gonna give it a name. We're gonna call it third. Because it's gonna be one third. And we'll say, okay. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just calling it third to remind me that it's a third. I'm just gonna move the dimension down out of the way. Now I want this remaining piece to be twice this piece. So I take another dimension, go from that center, go to this end point, and then I hit this blue squiggly thing over here, the enter expression button. And now I want it to equal that third times two. So how do I do that? Third, nope. If you look, it says third not found. I can say, constraints third and there it is and then I can say times two because I want it to be two-thirds so I'm gonna say okay say okay to that and now this is constrained to always be two-thirds and this is one-third so if I change this dimension it'll change this dimension automatically. Now, what if I want this point to always be 45 degrees to this point, no matter where this point is? How would I constrain this point at 45 degrees to this point? Here we're gonna use construction geometry. So I'm gonna change that to construction line. I'm gonna take a single line, take it from this point, I'm gonna bring it down roughly at 45 degrees. Then I'm gonna apply a constraint. The constraint's gonna go between this line and this line, 45 degrees. And now all it remains to do is to take this point and attach it to this line. We're gonna do that using our constraint point onto object. And now no matter what I do, this line will always be 45 degrees away from this point. Perfect. Now, finally, we're gonna constrain the rest of this model so we can see that there are a couple of areas where it needs to be constrained yet. If we look here, it's this distance. So you wanna go from here out to here we're going to constrain that 
And then we're going to go from here out to here to constrain that. And now here's another tip. If I want to figure out what needs to be constrained now, this is all obviously locked. This is not locked. And this is not locked. Everything else appears to be locked in place. So what we need to do is we need to dimension this. And you can see that these lines have already gone green, which means all of this is constrained. This is not, this is not, so I'm going to go from here to here, give that a dimension. And again, from here to here and give that a dimension. And now my, my sketch is constrained, but if we look, it says it's not fully constrained. Now these are all the parts that are going to make that pad. This Remember this construction line will not make the pad. But you still need to constrain the construction line to get a fully constrained model or sketch. So this line being able to move is preventing us from being fully constrained. So all we do is we select the line. We're going to just give it a dimension. And now our sketch is fully constrained. Okay, one bonus tip I'm going to do from here. So that's a fully constrained model. I showed you a few things on that one. We're going to do one last thing. I'm going to delete all of that mod, that sketch. Now I'm going to create a pad from that one. I want to show you one other thing that's kind of interesting. So here I'm going to create a sketch with a circle. Doesn't matter how big it is. Then I'm going to create a hole in that sketch so I'm going to close that I'll pad that and now I have a disk with a hole in it say okay I select that hole and I select polar pattern and then I select 10 items select okay and now what happened my holes are filled in they're no longer holes why is that? Well, when we do the polar pattern, it needs to have some geometry that it uses for that polar pattern. So I'm going to show you how you fix that. So we're going to delete that polar pattern. We'll go back to our sketch. and We'll just delete that circle. Close that. And we'll just pad this. And then we're going to add a new sketch on the XY plane. I'm just going to cut that in half. We'll pop that same circle, whatever size. We Obviously, we would constrain all of this, but I'm not going to constrain it for this. And then we're going to create a pocket. We're going to say through all, inverse. Say OK. And now we have our hole now this time because it's a pocket when I select it and I select the polar pattern now we have a polar pattern that actually creates holes so if I go up to 10 on that we have a polar pattern of holes so that was a bonus tip now if you've enjoyed this video it's just a quick tip video I think sometimes um, it's important to cover some of the basic stuff because people can struggle with that, trying to do the more complex stuff. I believe if you get the small pieces right, those small pieces all come together and you can create some significant models from that. Um, from pretty much anything that you can pad and pocket, you can create most shapes. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you uh, would share it with your friends, that would be fantastic. Of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, it's about time you did. You've been watching these videos. Why not subscribe and get notified when something new comes along? And then also, um, if you want to contribute to the channel, you can join as a member or you can join my Patreon or you can just buy me a coffee, which equals a beer. Thanks for watching. 
I will see you in the next one. If you have any suggestions, comments, or anything you would like to see in a future video, please let me know.